Welcome to the SEO.co Search Engine Optimization Podcast. Digital marketing essentials and next level tactics. From off-site and on-site optimization to persuasive selling and everything in between. You'll learn actionable tips on what it takes to outright and outrank your competition. Now, here's your host, Nate Nee. Welcome again to another episode of the SEO.co Search Engine Optimization Podcast. Today we're going to be discussing a little bit more about uh, the silent killers. And when I say the silent killers, I'm talking about four or four errors on your website. Um, when you have four or four errors on your site, uh, dead pages, typically four uh, dead pages that maybe existed once and, and Google had indexed, but is when Google goes to crawl them again, they may have disappeared. And 404 errors um, are not good for user experience and they're definitely not good for search engine optimization. So when you have a 404 errors, it indicates that something may have previously existed, uh, but your your sitemap may be inaccurate and is telling Google to crawl something that doesn't that is not there. In addition, if you have any inbound links to those pages, you might get traffic flowing from uh, other websites where you may have had some nice links coming to them and those links will land on dead 404 pages which is terrible for passing the link equity to your site it's also terrible for user experience and it's going to increase your overall bounce rate which is kind of like a double negative uh, the higher the bounce rate the more google's going to look at that and say hey this is this site isn't giving users what they want we're going to downgrade its downgrade the site in general so now there are cases when you may want to leave a 404 error uh, let's say it's a ghost page it has no inbound links from other websites from your own website and the page is no longer relevant you can either 404 it or redirect it um, I'm I'm in the redirecting camp the 301 redirecting camp uh, some people will say don't redirect it just let it 404 and, and Google will eventually drop it out of the index which is true um, but just for for potential, you you may not know you may have a link there that comes in, and you know the fo the folks in the other camp would say, yeah, just let it let it uh, lapse. But I would say, hey, for or they also might tell you that you know having a large uh, HT access file and or NGINX file with your redirects, it's it's not good for SEO either, but. Uh, a few of them here and there is not going to hurt you, and I, I would I would personally rather perform the the redirect. Um, now, how how to find your 404 errors? Uh, the easiest way to find 404 errors errors is uh, just go over to your Google uh, Search Console, which formerly was Google Webmaster Tools, and there they'll be able to if the errors exist, you'll be able to pull them directly and see exactly where they are, and just go in and, and fix them. Um, there, it's going to list any pages uh, that Google thinks may have existed once existed uh, that don't currently anymore and that are throwing off an error. Um, there's one caveat to using Google uh, uh, Search Console is the Google crawlers are much more technical than the average user. And so they may encounter four or four errors and you may find a handful of four or four errors that uh Will, will never be encountered by an average Joe. So they might they might say, hey, you've got 500 uh, 404 errors based on you know something. Maybe maybe you change some sort of structure on your site and those errors are showing. Well, those errors aren't going to create a bad user experience, but they they are hidden 404 errors and they can be silent killers unless you get them fixed. So uh, t technically, when you want to fix your 404 errors. And, and usually create redirects and um, we'll link to a helpful guide development guide uh, here on how to how to do that but prioritizing those four or four errors based on uh, like we were talking about if they already have internal links inbound links from other websites you want to prioritize those first and it's important to get those four or four errors fixed uh, more quickly than others not all four or four errors are created equal like I said some can just be let go if it doesn't matter, just let it go. Google will s stop crawling it. The one thing you will want to do, however, is pull those four or four errors out of your 
uh, your sitemap if they exist in your sitemap. That way, uh, in Google Search Console, it's not still throwing off the error. You don't want those errors to uh, to be to be included in there. Um, if you want to keep your 404 errors and not redirect them, uh, you can create custom 404 error landing pages. And there are some nice plugins if you're using WordPress to do that. You can create your own custom 404 error landing pages. Uh, these also present uh, unique link, bi uh, link building opportunities. And we've discussed this before, broken link building through finding 404 errors on other websites, competitors' websites, uh, publisher websites is a great way to source uh, link building opportunities. So if you're looking to build links, then uh, 404 errors is a great strategy that you can use. And uh, we'll, we'll, we've we discussed that previously. We'll link to that uh, episode as well and uh, the blog post. Um, the, the one thing to consider here is once you fix your 404 errors, make sure you fix your sitemaps. Some sitemaps will update automatically, but for those that don't, make sure you go in uh, once you fix the 404 errors, either through redirect or or through just letting them lapse, make sure you pull both of those out of your sitemap so Google's not uh, wasting crawl efforts on those and throwing off the error. Hopefully this um, tutorial was a little bit helpful for you. Um, we look forward to seeing you back again. What We'd also like to know what, uh, what types of content you'd like to see. So like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the SEO.co podcast. We appreciate your time. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show and visit SEO.co for more resources based on today's topic, as well as access to more podcast episodes to help you improve your site's long-term SEO success.